Ahoy mates! Hello happy travelers! Welcome back on board, not icon of the seas, radiance <laughs> of the seas, day number two. It's a day at sea, let's go ahead and get it started. Day number two begins right now. Hey Matt, while you're just lounging around, why don't you tell us what we are going to be doing today? We are going to be discussing this ship, Radiance of the Seas, and kind of this class of ship. What it's like when you're sailing on an older, smaller ship. What's dated, what's different, all of those kind of things. Yes, so we are going to be exploring the ship today, kind of seeing what condition Radiance of the Seas is in, because I gave you the dates yesterday. It's kind of an older ship. So we want to see what kind of condition it's in, what it's like cruising on this type of ship and just seeing what kind of ship shape she's in. And I can think of no better place to start than in our stateroom. So it's time for random things that Chelsea thinks about their stateroom. Number one, some things like the fixtures or the artwork or the finishes in general, they're gonna be a bit more dated, which that doesn't bother me so much. That's not a big deal. But number two, one thing that does bother me is that these walls are thin. A lot of times in these older ships, they haven't perfected the art of noise canceling between the cabins. So we definitely heard some noise on this side and some noise on this side last night, which was a bit disturbing, but not a not a huge deal for us, we're heavy sleepers, but if you're a light sleeper, just keep that in mind. If you're on an older ship, probably the walls are gonna be a bit thinner than you'd like. Number three, overall the cleanliness and condition of the room isn't too bad, but there are some things showing their age, like this, uh, this, this should not be like this, this should be like this, then it is not. Um, and then like there's some scratched paint and stuff like that. It's not pristine. Matt, would you like to display the age of the couch? Well, let's see if you can see this in action. <laughs> Sit on this side. All right, uh, bad. Yeah, uh-huh. When I go to this side, though. Sink. I mean, what? It's like a crevasse. Here, I'll show you the crevasse. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it. We're not even pushing on it. You can see it. No, and it's, it's more than what it looks like. Like, this is like this and this like you really do like sink down i don't know it's not going to display as much on camera but just trust us it's a crevasse number four the tech is not going to be updated in these older style cabins tv is much smaller it's kind of hanging on the mount it's a little unsturdy but um i do like that you can plug in our roku and stuff like that it's accessible so that that's a plus number five why are these mirrors here? They don't serve a purpose. You're not gonna be like, oh, let me get ready right here above the bed. No, they're trying to deceive you by making the room look bigger, but we know what you're up to, Royal. We know what you're up to. All right, that's all I got for the room. That ends this edition of Random Thoughts Chelsea had about the stateroom. Now let's go explore the ship. Now here's something cool about Radiance of the Seas and the entire Radiance class, the most glass of a ship class at sea, at least it used to be, I think it still is, including this cool set of elevators. Not only have glass doors here, but are glass open out to the ocean as well. So it's a picturesque ride, that if is, you get that side. That is cool, especially since the ship is in Alaska a lot. I mean, like, that's perfect for sightseeing in Alaska. So that is, that's a plus. Sunday, 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 we got one of the cool ones. We look at the raging waves. Views all around. We didn't hit the button. Whoops. <laughs> oh, we're going up anyways. Deep nine. Riding the elevator actually was a good segue because that's something I want to talk about on these uh, smaller ships is that there's only two elevator bays on this ship, on the radius class, and they're like both pretty small, like not only the amount of elevators, but the, um, the size of the actual elevator. So they get like filled up like way easier and way quicker and way more often. And this is actually a good segue to the probably the biggest point we want to make about classes of ship, older class versus newer class. Look at the pool deck right now. Look at the weather. It's not even nice out. It's dark and cloudy. Look how crowded it is. Now granted, there's an event going on, but that's actually the point. People always tell us that they're afraid to go on the newer and larger ships because they don't want to deal with crowds. We always feel more crowded on the smaller ships because everyone
everyone goes to the same event at the same time. So when you combine that fact with the fact that most of the venues are smaller, the thoroughfares are smaller, the hallways, the stairwells, the elevators are smaller, we always feel more crowded on these ships. Well, I think on the newer classes of ships, there's more activities and different things to do, and just like more venues for people to go to so they can spread out, whereas on like ratings class or other smaller older ships, people are going to be going hurting to the same things at the same time. Don't get me wrong, the belly flop contest is usually popular, but not this popular. <laughs> Despite the class of ships, some things never change with Royal Caribbean, including the name of the buffet. Now the name is the same, some things will be the same with the design, like the floor to ceiling windows on the outside and the food in the middle, but you'll notice the decor, kind of the old school nautical theme, and it's going to be a much smaller venue. Although something cool about Radiance class Windjammers, and that is that they have an outdoor open air seating section here on the very aft of the ship, so you can enjoy the wake views while you're dining, get some fresh air, and it is covered so you don't have to worry too much about rain or beating down sunshine. <laughs> Just stopped back in our room to drop a drink <laughs> off in the fridge. We've never seen this before, ever. All the curses we've done, they put the tally on the toilet. What is it, a little, what is it, a little turkey? A little duck, maybe? Duckling? Maybe. What are the things in the tent, though? A little I, dove? I don't know. I, I'm not <laughs> sure I like this. <laughs> ah, there's an explosion of art in the hallway. It's everywhere. Watch out. Which is not really uncommon for them to have art out for the art auctions and stuff like that, but it's a little bit crowded in the hallways because they don't have anywhere else to put it. So sometimes storage is an issue with these older, smaller ships. Yeah, I like this one. The uh, one duck's looking one way, the other duck's looking the other way. And then this guy's like, yeah, what do you want from me? So I want to talk about something that you will find commonly on older ships, but I think it's especially bad on the Radiance class ships because of the Centrum. Now the Centrum itself is super awesome, but there is one problem, one major problem for certain people. So if I come up here to the sixth deck, you can see the entrance to Casino Royale right over there and as well on this side. Now there aren't any doors that close and open, so it's open air from the casino inside of the Centrum here. And then the Centrum is open air all the way up the ship and all the way back down to the bottom decks there. So in a combination of that and the doors opening up to the outside areas, you'll find that a lot of cigarette smoke does come in and it's almost like an air draft pulls it up and goes throughout the entire ship. It doesn't bother me, but I know some people are very sensitive to that. So many of the areas on this ship smell like cigarette smoke, even if you're not anywhere near that because it's being pulled through the area. Like when we came out of the wind jammer earlier, we could smell it even though we weren't really near that. But if you're going with a, when life gives you lemon vibes, when you go over to the schooner bar, the cigarette smoke adds aesthetic. It smells like gunpowder in here. Like these cannons just went ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom into the ship. Like this guy, for example, look at him. You can tell by his face he's worried that his ship might be in peril because he smells the gun smoke slash cigarettes. Well, when life gives you gunpowder. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All jokes aside, like the casino really is causing the illusion that it smells like gunpowder in the schooner bar. It's kind of weird, but kind of cool at the same time. And if you're a fan of the schooner bar, I'm gonna say Radiance class ships is kind of where it's at, cause it's ginormous. While newer ships may still have a schooner bar, lately Royal hasn't been dedicating as much space to the schooner bar. So if you're into nautical decor and schooner vibes, you'll, you'll probably really enjoy this bar on this ship. What's behind curtain number one? It's me! <laughs> What's the password? Uh, Monty Hall? How did you know? Here's something you don't see on other Royal Caribbean ships. A cinema! An actual movie theater! Now other ships will play movies in the main theater, like the Broadway show yeah. theater. They'll put a screen down and play them, and they also do that here on Radiance, but a dedicated cinema as well. That's cool. It's definitely an old school idea, but it's kind of like fun too. Yeah. And they don't play like, I wouldn't say first run movies like Disney Cruise Line does, where it's out in theaters and you're watching it on the ship. But it is still kind of somewhat newer stuff that they've been showing. They've been showing like new movies like at the time of this sailing. They're showing like Elemental, the um, the new Little Mermaid movie. It's funny that they're showing Disney movies. <laughs> the new Haunted Mansion movie. Yeah, this is just what's hot right now. <laughs> the I new guess. Indiana Jones. It's all Disney. Oh Wait a minute, gosh. what's going on? Royal 
think about not crossing or keep crossing, I don't care. Now let's talk about activities that you can do on board. We said that there's not like a ton to do. You're not gonna find like category six water park or anything like on Icon, but there are still some things to do. They got a rock climbing wall. They do have a singular water slide and cute little splash area for the kids. They have an old school style mini golf course. In fact, look, it's called Fairways of Radiance. A lot of ships, once they've been amplified, it's called blank dunes, like Radiance Dunes or like Mariner Dunes or something like that. Nope, this is still fairway. And they got a basketball court. Some stuff to do, just not a huge plethora. It is pretty limited and pretty standard. So keep that in mind, especially if kids are coming with you on board. Now one area on Radiance class ships that we really enjoy is the Solarium. And we don't even frequent Solariums that much on other Royal Caribbean class ships, but on the Radiance class it's nice because of the way they decorate it. It's just super cool in here. These big elephant heads, got the cat laying over there, got the pillars with the stuff going across, hot tub over there, and then the pool in the middle, and you get to walk across this cool, like, rope, it's not a rope bridge, it's an actual bridge, but it has the ropes on the side. There's just really nice design in here, and you have the glass ceiling, even some themed artwork walls. And there's a bar over there where Chelsea's getting her drink right now, which is a pretty common staple of the solarium. But something more unique on this class is what they call Park Cafe. Now we know that name from Royal Caribbean ships that have a central park area, hello, and have a Park Cafe there. But they've kind of named it that inside the solarium here. And this operates basically as your cafe promenade, Park Cafe would on other ships. You even have a section here with cookies and like a salad bar. Make your own salad. Well, they make it for you, but choose your own salad. Not to mention a standard self-service beverage station. Thank you so much. Which, it's really good that the solarium is cool on the ship because when you're on this class of ship, like older style ships, like because there's not as many activities, like you're gonna be doing a lot of relaxing and just kind of chilling out. So it's nice that the solarium is a good place to do that. Are you thirsty, Elefante? Want a sip? No? What about you, Gazelle? You thirsty? No? I got no takers. I don't know why, it's delicious. I guess they're a little bit too cheeky. I <laughs> get it. Okay, now I wanna transition for a minute and talk about the condition that the ship is in. So not like, how date is the decor, because we all know it is, but like, how is Radiance holding up? Is it, how pristine or not pristine is it? For example, over at the Quill and Compass, which is the pub on board, you can see some areas that are getting like a bit torn up and stuff, wood lifting and just, just, you know, showing its age a lot. This is really funny and understandable, but they have a dartboard here and it's like, like the regular kind of dartboard, not the electronic ones. And you can see like the holes where people have missed like everywhere. And you can even see it on the ground too. Just, just years and years of dart holes. While we're talking about condition that the ship's in, I haven't noticed anything like specifically broken. Like the video board, that's a constant thing that'll go out sometimes on older ships. It's working just fine. And yeah, I haven't noticed anything that's like not operational. So that's good to see. Now here's an example of some maintenance kind of stuff. We saw a railing that was like this yesterday and we can't find it now, but they've just got washcloths over these little things taped off like masking tape. And like I said, we saw a whole railing like that that had it all there yesterday not sure if they're getting ready to paint stuff or what ah here's the railing in question covered in washcloths I mean, what and is masking that, tape what is that accomplishing not much because it's getting wet and it's just coming off anyways but i mean i don't even know what that's covered i mean it looks like yuck underneath but like i don't know like what oh yeah that rail looks in pretty bad shape i don't know what purpose i don't know maybe it was like getting brittle and they were covering up so it wouldn't get brittle maybe I don't know, but yeah, it, it needs some TLC, that's for sure. And what's funny too, is that this decrepit railing <laughs> leads into the uh, outside sitting for the concierge lounge. So not exactly the most luxe of um, specialty experiences. Once again, you're gonna see stuff chipped up a bit and scraped up and uh, having some character to it. A little bit of rust and dinge will be found here and there. 
As you can see, the crew is out there painting, trying to keep up with everything, trying to keep the ship looking good. But honestly, it's just kind of hard to keep up with it all, to keep a ship this old looking good, when, especially when it hasn't had a proper refurb in a while. And let your Disney Cruise Line. They're the exception, I will say. If you're looking for an older ship that is absolutely pristine, go on the Disney Magic. It's like she's brand new. Speaking of Disney Cruise Line and just Royal Caribbean in general, you do get what you pay for. So this ship, of course, is not going to have all those different bells and whistles like we talked about, all those different activities and, and dining options and things like that. Like you might find on Oasis class, Quantum class, Icon class, or even some of the older stuff like uh, Voyager and Freedom class that have kind of been getting those amplifications. But typically, these older, smaller ships are going to come at a lower price point than some of those will. Now, of course, that depends on the itinerary, how many days, where it's going, things like that. There is some variance there. But it is kind of like a, you get what you pay for, right? As we all know, the Icon just debuted, newest, largest cruise ship in the world, our new favorite ship in the world. But it does come with a hefty, hefty price tag. But you're getting so much included with that. So it's always kind of that reference point, right? You can't compare apples to oranges. The Radiance of the Seas is not Icon of the Seas, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And there's a good reason for that, and that does come with its own set of pros and cons. Less things, but less money. Now, with all that said, we're not trying to dog on Radiance or say that you shouldn't go on Radiance of the Seas. We just want you to know what to expect, what the vibe's gonna be, what the conditions are gonna be on board if you do decide to sail on Radiance. I mean, is this our favorite cruise ship in the world? To be honest, no, it's not. We prefer the newer, bigger style ships. But at the end of the day, you're on a cruise, this is your view. So it can't be that bad. All right, friends, that's gonna do it for us. Day number two on board, Radiance of the Seas. Tomorrow is a perfect day. At Coco Cay. So we hope we'll see you back there. As always, we're travel agents. Want a book? Reach out via the travel agent information in the description below. But for tonight, we're gonna sign off. See you back tomorrow for a perfect day. Until then, happy, happy travels. travels.